we bought a 40 pound box of Granny Smith apples. Uh, they're flavor pack brand. They're sliced and peeled and ready to use any way you want to use them. So we're going to put them in bags, uh, probably, well, going to use two gallon zipper bags and going to see how much will fit in them. Trying to get five to ten pounds in each bag. Individually click frozen. Granny Smith sliced apples, 40 pounds of them, 61, so just over a dollar and a half a pound, which is not as good as what we do at the, the you pick place when we get apples. However, there's no waste on these. They're already prepared and ready to go. And it's still better than lots of times at grocery store prices. Ha ha ha. Look at those beauties. I think I'll get a pair of gloves on because those are going to be cold. Okay, so my plan is just to scoop them up and put them in there. So right. five pounds, yep. Five pounds, zero ounces. Oh yeah, that really is going to be full enough if we want to be able to stack them a little bit in the freezer. Kind of flattened out the pack, sucked the extra air out so that they'll stack nice in the freezer till we're ready to use them. And there we have it. 40 pounds of peeled sliced apples ready to use with very little work. When you go to the store, to the produce section, and get some fresh apples, what do you know about fresh fruit and controlled atmosphere storage? Uh, controlled atmosphere storage is an incredible storage method to keep fruit fresh and available longer. Um, it does lose some of its texture and, and flavors a bit, but it can be stored for a long time. Frozen fruit is usually picked and processed very rapidly. Frozen fruits and vegetables are probably a better choice than your produce section unless the things are in season. But on the average, apples are many months old uh, before you buy them. Anyway, that's one of the reasons I like frozen fruit unless I can go to the you pick place and get my own. Uh, frozen, most of the frozen fruits and vegetables are picked, processed, and frozen within hours or at the very worst days as opposed to months. So it's time to get it pre-chilling and get things in the freeze dryer. So get the defrost fan out and get the baffle out and before I get this started again gonna wipe it out got my paper towel on a stick and I'm just going to use it alongside there make sure I don't find any food particles I mean if there's any water I'm not worried about that and along the top I wouldn't expect any food up there but it can sometimes find some water and underneath and that's more likely where I'm going to find any water droplets. Okay, a little bit of water, but no food. Okay, everything's nice and clean still. If I were to find any food bits or anything, or, or grime of any kind, then I would know it's time to pull it apart and clean it again. Get the thermometer back underneath. and get the front disc in place and get that closed. Before I start it, I'm going to go check the water from the last batch, which was the carrots. It was a very full batch, had lots of water. It was the lightest thing so far when it came back out. So the water is very, very full, a very full gallon. Yep. So that's extremely full. So more than a gallon of came out and I can see a little damp spot on the concrete down there so it actually overflowed slightly. I'll turn off the drain valve so that's set. Get this started, customize, and start custom because I have, every, have everything set. Drain valve is closed, door is closed. 
Okay, one more thing I like to do is check to make sure that the ring, the seal, shows a ring all the way around. And it doesn't right now. There's a space here. Uh, looks like just a space here. So if I take my little palette knife in there and just give it a little twist. Now I see the ring forming around there. Okay. And there's a little space right here. Okay, now I've got a seal all the way around. So as soon as that's finished chilling, uh, then we'll get the fruit on the trays and get them in there. So I'm only going to give it probably a half hour or so. I need to get it lower than the freezer temperature, which is about five degrees, zero to five degrees. So I want to wait till that long so that it um, is already as cold as what the fruit is. But shouldn't take very long. We'll be back when that's ready. As usual, I got sidetracked with other things. The freeze dryer has been pre-cooling for an hour 24 already, and it's uh, already 25 below zero. Uh, let's get the fruit in the freeze dryer and get it going. Okay, tray number one. So I need to get to 1889 on this tray. And kind of load them on there and then we'll move them around. Okay, that's how many we need on this tray. I don't know if I can do 10 pounds of apples uh, this slice to this way. Well, nope, I think it's going to make it. Again, super full. And tray two. And the trays were kept in the freezer to chill them. To keep them nice and cold. Okay, so I need to get to 1876 on this tray. And again, it's pre-weighed, so I'm not terribly concerned about not having it. It might be on the wrong tray, but the totals will, should be fine. And tray four should be the rest of it. So I'll pour them on there and then weigh them. I do like getting our apples at our local U-Pick place. For one thing, they're super fresh. I mean, you know, they're right then. And also, they're inexpensive. Um, we've been going there for years, and most of the apples are 50 cents a pound. And so we usually get a one or two hundred well, two or three hundred pounds a year is not uncommon. Do lots of applesauce and just eat apples and apple cobbler, apple pie. And I'm going to get thermometers in these. So I'll go in one of the pieces of apple. Apples drill easily. All right. So I want them this on the bottom layer. And an apple slice on top of where the thermometer is. Okay, get that one in there. A nice apple slice on top of it. All right. Get those over and get them in the freeze dryer. That is a full batch again. So this is the first time we've ever done these particular apples. We've always done our own fresh apples that we peel and slice. So these will be interesting. And tray number four going in. Okay, the apples are very cold still. 20 degrees, 10 degrees, 10 degrees, 10 degrees. So the apples are all very cold. Still chilling. Uh, the freeze dryer says it's negative 28 and it'll come up a bit because that relatively warm stuff. So 10 degrees versus negative 30, so a 40 degree difference. Okay, we have a nice ring around there for a seal, so that's sealed well. 
Uh, the drain valve is still closed. Everything's ready. It'll start itself in four hours and 20 minutes, uh, which will be about three in the morning. Um, so it's good to go. We'll come back and check it tomorrow or the next day. Today's May 10th. These will be done May 12th. It's at the last few minutes. Arrow down, get past the last of it. Make this quieter, slightly quieter. And we'll take them out and check them. The apples have been in there for 38 and 3 quarters hours. I'm uh, going to take them out, check them, put them back in for a little bit to make sure that they've lost all the weight they're going to. Uh, it's pretty full. They're pretty stacked pretty high on the tray. I want to make sure that they're completely dry before I bag anything. So open the drain valve. Okay, tray one, 914, 913. 904, they look pretty nice. 898 and 905. And I'm going to rotate the trays because it's always a little colder on the bottom tray, or almost always. Now, I'm going to put them back in for another couple hours, check the weights again, make sure that they're completely dry. So, close the drain valve. More dry time. Close the drain valve. I did. And it's still cool because the fan's blowing on it. Good seal instantly, so it's ready to go. Come back in another hour and a half, two hours. It's down to just over 10 minutes left. I always like to check it when it has 15 minutes or more left. Once it gets down to the last 15 minutes, the heaters turn off and then they start to cool. Okay, we'll arrow past the rest of this, get them out and checked, make sure that they've stopped losing weight. Okay, I'll leave that running, but open the drain valve. Okay, we'll get them weighed. Tray one. Okay, and no change. All right. I weighed all the trays and there was no more weight loss, so they were ready to take out and bag. I'll roll the cart over to the bagging area and get them started. We'll get all the weights, get all the thermometers out and get the weights checked. So, nine out here. okay. All right, so I've got all the weights. Now we'll find out what size bag they'll fit in. I've labeled some quart bags and some two quart bags this time. I'm um, going for about 10 bags again, and we'll see what sizes are needed. I don't think a lot of these slices are gonna fit in one of the quart bags, because uh, they're, they're just pretty big. But these are a nice looking apple. I'll do the math, find out how much goes per pound. The Granny Smith apples are out of the freeze dryer and I've got them weighed and I've got the numbers. So 584 grams of apple left after freeze drying. So 10 pounds is now 584 grams. So 58.4 grams per pound. We'll see how many fit in a bag. Let's get them bagged and then we can get them put in the storage. No, I don't have the weight on here yet, so I've got the batch number, what it is, and the date that it went into the freeze dryer. I don't have a weight on there yet because I'm not sure how much you'll fit. So I'm going to do some of these quart bags and then probably do, then I'll do some of the two quart bags. So I need 
43.8 grams to get three quarters of a pound. Let's find out how much will fit. Okay, that'll close. Let's see what we have. Okay, 43.8, that's what I'm gonna go for. So three quarters of a pound. Whoa, nailed it. So that would be a three quarter of a pound. That's a pretty decent amount. So I'm gonna pour it back out of here. So we can get a look at how much that would be. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's a good snack amount. It looks like an apple and a half, maybe two apples worth. So that's a decent amount. Add this three quarter pound. So now I've got the batch number, what it is, the date it went in, and the weight it was before it was freeze dried. So again, 43.8. Nailed it again. Now I'm going to do one of the bigger bags and find out how much will go in there. Obviously, I could fit more. I'm going to start with a pound. I might go to a pound and a half. A pound would be 58.4. That would fit in this bag easily. Okay, and that would be a nice even 87 grams for a pound and a half. So I'm going to do a pound and a half in that one. That's close enough. Uh, this one has a pound and a half, so uh, twice what the other one is. All right, a pound. And because of my inaccuracy of measuring, I can eat that much. Now, I'm going to add the oxygen absorbers. I've got 300 cc oxygen absorbers for these smaller bags. And then and I'm using the, these 500 cc oxygen absorbers for these bigger bags. Okay. And get these zippered shut. Now these bigger ones that have less apples in them, I'm going to go ahead and squish any of the extra air out. There was no room on the little ones to do that. They were already pretty close to the top. Got rid of the air at the top area, so now there's not as much air in there. Okay, now heat seal them. And then holding it for a few seconds to it to cool just a little bit. Okay, a beautiful seal. And I try to, again, I've got it at the top in case I need to add more seals, or if I open it and use part of it and want to reseal. So that one I kind of bumped it. I don't have the full seal across there. I want to do it again just a little bit lower. Make sure I get the full width of the seal on there. That's better. Okay, and these bags are a little bit bigger. They, these seem like they tend to have a wrinkly top to them sometimes. So I kind of roll them over that seal area and then hold it so they've got a nice smooth seal area. Then bring this down alongside my fingers and let go. All right, it ends up being a little bit lower because I'm holding on to it, but it still leaves room for at least one more seal below it, and there's still a room for a seal above it. So if this one's bad, I can put one on top. Then if I cut it off, I could still have room for one below it. The last thing I do before I put them in the storage bins is I write the gross weight on each bag. That way if any moisture starts getting in the bag and adding weight, I'll know before I open it and I can catch it early. So if I have a bad seal or a puncture in a bag, uh, this would let me know just by weighing that bag. All right, all the apples are in the bags. I used five two-quart bags and six one-quart bags. We'll get those in the bins. Those are going into bin two. Uh, I'll mark that on my list so I'll know where to find them again later. Apples are probably one of my favorite freeze-dried fruit. We've done hundreds of pounds of, of apples. Golden Delicious are probably my favorite flavor of freeze-dried apples. We go to the U-Pick place and they're 50 cents a pound. Uh, you have to peel them, core them, slice them, all that, but I love them. So this box of apples, we've got 40 pounds of apples already pre-sliced, peeled. Everything's done with them. They're already pre-frozen. Just throw them out on the tray. It worked out pretty well. 
And these are Granny Smith apples, which would be good pie apples. I think that's why they're made this way. If I could get other apples in boxes like this, I think I would try some of the other types. Anyway, these will go in the bins and we'll get that done. And then we'll get started on the next one. The machine is defrosting now. As soon as that's defrosted, we'll get the next batch in there. If it's dairy, we'll be doing shredded cheese this time. So this is the power usage for the apples, 27.29 kilowatt hours. And then I'll reset it for the next batch. And then it's ready to start recording for the next batch. So bin two, we'll add the apples to it. So now we have a, a meats and a vegetables. Now we'll have a fruit in that bin. At first I tried to stand the bags up in the bins, but they're so slippery they kept falling over. So I decided it was better just to lay them down and nestle them together so they wouldn't move. All right, so that's three batches. Still should be room for the three more batches. And we'll have that whole set in this bin. So that's it for now and finish defrosting and then we'll be loading up the freeze dryer again.